as, as they as they get for kicker. And you are welcome to the hurry when you do that as Whitaker after fumbling it. And Whitaker comes right back. Give me the ball. And that's a great decision. You know, Mark Tressman going right back to him. And whether that was the plan or not, it's always smart whether you're the guy who, a receiver who dropped the pass or a running back that fumbled the football. Go right back to him in the first play. Get that behind him. Get him involved because they need Brandon Whitaker for success. Calvillo, second down and two. His team down seven. Calvillo. And miscommunication there to Patrick Lavoie. Now Lavoie just it's not used to as much playing time as he's been getting due to the injuries and the timing off there because he didn't get his head around in time. It was supposed to be fake, turn and throw. And he was not prepared to catch it. Chad Owens is back, Sean White. White, nearly blocked. Owens takes it at the 35. Owens stumbled and unable to break it. And he is down. And that is where Toronto will start. The Senior Open Championship continues tomorrow with coverage of the third round of Turnberry Resort in Scotland. Live coverage begins noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on TSN2. Prime Minister Harper is here this evening in Montreal. And Larry Smith right beside him, the former president. West. Objection of conduct. Montreal, number 19. 10-yard penalty. First down, Toronto. Penalty is on S.J. Green. Penalty is becoming a factor here with Montreal on special teams. Yeah, and, and one bad one on defense from Seth Williams, remember, yes. in that first half that extended a drive for the Toronto Argonauts. Ricky Ray. Play action. Ray has it knocked. And as he turned to dump it off to Boyd, Rod Davis comes in. His first year on the Montreal, and able to get a hand on it. Well, he, he knows that his, his responsibility is not the run, so what he's got to do is come straight up the field and make sure he at least has contained. Quarterback Ricky Ray there. He's high. Ricky Ray says, whoa, I got a chance here. Second and ten. Ray across the middle, in and out of the hands of Inman. And the defense comes up big, Gerald Brown right there. And you got to love what Gerald Brown is doing. He, he was victimized in the first half. Chad Owens got in behind him a couple of times on touchdowns. But this is, as I mentioned earlier, one of their best defenders in the secondary. And he's coming back and battling in this second half. That's a big play, good coverage over the middle on Dontrell Inman. And he gets that defense off the field because of it. Bo Bowling is back. Swayze Waters lifting it high. Go the sideline. Flags down. 46 yard boot by Swayze Waters. Before the game, Montreal honored both Coach Joe Pop, the father of Jim Pop, and Greg Mons, who passed away with more on that here is John Lou thank you Matt and one Argo in particular who truly felt the sting of Greg Mons's passing was defensive back Jordan Younger who was recruited by Mons along with former defensive end Jonathan Brown now Brown Brown and Younger were teammates in the Amer uh, the Arena Football League's Indiana Firebirds and as the story goes Mons in early 2004 called up Brown and offered him a job five late five minutes later he phoned Younger's cell phone 
offered him a job, but what Mons didn't know is that the two players were actually roommates. They were in the same room at the time, and had he known, he could have just asked Brown to pass the phone to Younger and saved himself a call. And he got them both. Yeah. yeah and he, Greg Mons brought in a lot of great talent in the Canadian Football League and spent time in, in Hamilton, Toronto, spent time with the BC Lions, had a great coaching record, as a matter of fact, and short amount of time that he did coach in, in BC but both those gentlemen of course Jim Pop's father and and Greg Mons our, our thoughts and prayers both their families and great football men Absolutely. here's Calvillo second and seven pass is caught Richardson and a big catch there when you need second and eight and second and long you go to Jamel Richardson you rely on him. 20 yard game and he's just going to start to eventually just let the game come to him and when he does and I thought you made a great point Matt at the beginning of the game you talked about the fact that he hasn't seen the ball much but when we talked to Marcus Brady he said you know what we, we're we leading the league in passing and he hasn't seen the ball much and that's a great glasses half full way to look at it because if they do get him going Watch out. And Anthony Calvillo said, we're taking what the defense gives. I'm not going to force it. Calvillo right down the middle of the field. A strike. A flag is down. Richardson with the catch once again. And it's coming back. Yep. Is this the moment? Is this the time that... Calvillo and Richardson just shaking their head. Holding, Montreal, number 54. 10-yard penalty remains first down. Dev Parrott. Then a 28-yard gain. Jiro Kowali is coming off the edge, and Jeff Parrott, the right tackle. You're going to see that there's absolutely no way that the official can let that one go. I mean, he has his arms wrapped around him and actually brings him to the ground. First and 20, Calvillo. Calvillo steps up, fires once again. Ball is lost as S.J. Green down, and the pass is incomplete. They're calling it incomplete, but Scott Milenovic might want to look at this because S.J. Green looked like he had it. Did he have possession? He wasn't touched and then lost it himself. I mean, that's... It happened. He's got the catch there. Yeah. Looks like the, he had possession. Second and 20. Six minutes left here in the third. Down seven. Calvillo to S.J. Green. And Green initially hit by ball. And then Jalil Carter. I wraps think, him up. I think we may have a late hit on the quarterback here, Matt, and I, I think it was Marcus Ball. Yep. Major foul. Broken the passer. Yeah, Marcus Toronto, Ball. Number six. 15 yards from the end of the play. Automatic first down. Big penalty there. It's automatic first down and roughing the passer, and they're moving the chains as well. That was a hunting situation. And you're gonna you be the judge. I mean, I think he got enough of them that you have to call this. Could he get out of the way and avoid contact? Yeah. He pulled up a little bit at the end, but roughing the passer keeps the drive alive. Into Toronto territory and a handoff. Whitaker rolling forward inside the 50. And a pickup of six. It's gonna bring Second down and four. Just watching the body language of the offensive line after that run. And Josh Berg had his hands on his head and was moving around as if they're they missed a couple assignments up front. Of course, Jeff Parrott just got the holding call. And I think they thought they had an even bigger play for Brandon Whitaker there had they made the right blocks. That's the veteran at that left tackle spot. Windsor, Ontario. Whitaker once again flags are down. Four 
4.45 remaining in the third. And, and was it just me or was there a little confusion again yeah. on that last play with Josh Burke turning around and saying, what was the call there? Offsides, Toronto, number 24. A five yard penalty, the first down. Evan McCullough. So all of a sudden, penalties rearing their head here for the Argos. And the Argos haven't been bad in the penalty department no. so far after four games. They rank fourth with 77 yards per game. But those are big ones. I mean, any penalty that extends a drive when your defense was about to leave the field, come back and haunt you in a big way. Two in this series. Calvillo first and ten play action rolling out watch it, watch it, watch and out of bounds as Kevin Huntley was racing to the scene to track down Calvillo second and ten defense coordinator Chris Jones calls the play there he was the intended target I think at the Calvillo <laughs> just saw he had every man covered down the field so he threw it right at Chris Jones he just got out of he didn't go for the interception. He didn't take the interception back to the house. <laughs> Tennessee native. Calvillo. Bunch formation. Underneath Richardson. And a big pop by Carter. Not much there for Anthony Calvillo. A year make for... Jamel Richardson first four games that he played in last year because he missed the third game of the season but the first four he played in 401 yards three touchdowns he's not found the end zone after four this season and about half the yardage so that's the frustration now we mentioned his knee coming out of training camp that's been a bit of an issue for him similar starts to 2010 season no touchdowns in the first four games. 19 receptions, 188 yards. But his numbers look even better tonight if that one play wasn't called back. Absolutely. Sean White from 49. And it's good. Four-point game as Sean White drills it. Who drive tomorrow in Calgary. There's folks coming out to McMahon tomorrow night. You see the BC Lions and Stan Peters. Remember that. Chad Owens. Owens is brought down by Brian Ridgeway. Ridgeway, the best special teams player. He's standing out once again. Uh, he's been outstanding. Seven special teams tackles on the year. And I think he gave Chad Owens a little something extra at the bottom of this tackle, too, if I'm not mistaken. He plays it well, feathers it out. you got to be patient with Chad Owens. And then he's had a couple of high tackles, one that should have been called and wasn't earlier in the game by Carisse Bear. That one was okay, I think. Brian Ridgway just kind of turned him into the ground. And the Fraser product. SFU, yeah. And John Bowman able to get it there. And there's your sack. And so 205 pounds to the sack tally. And John Bowman coming off the edge. Mentioned he had one in the first half called back by penalty. And before long, he will start to get back into his rhythm and in his groove, and he can be a difference maker. If he, Chip Cox, and Dwight Anderson start playing well, this defense gets that much better in a big hurry. 54 career sacks. Crowd getting into it here at Molson Stadium. Pressure once again. Ricky Ray to the far side. Ray in a sliding catch by Spencer Watt. Ventrell Jenkins can't believe he missed him. Pressure coming from one side of the field on Ricky Ray was picked up by Corey Boyd. Flushed Ray out of the pocket. Pressure was coming from this side. That's picked up well right here by Corey Boyd. And then on the front side of the play, when Ricky Ray is flushed, right there, Ventrell Jenkins thought he not only had a chance at the sack, but he thought he may have got held. Swayze Waters 
the bull bowling this defense of Montreal has turned up the heat bowling and flags down likely no yards right down there on the sideline but I agree with you Matt the defense for the Montreal Alouettes is starting to get that pressure Trustman talked about coming out at halftime no yards Toronto number eight it's a five yard penalty first down Montreal Carroll four point game 205 remaining in the third and the way this one started you thought the lights were just going to be flat it was going to go <laughs> All of a sudden, these defenses, a couple of penalties, a yeah. couple of turnovers by Montreal. Calvillo looks to the near side, fires it, and is caught by Victor Anderson. Victor Anderson. In his first CFL game. And Brandon Isaac closes in a hurry on Anderson. And the idea there is you get it out to your running back and you let him turn and make somebody miss. But Brandon Isaac closed that ground so quickly. That's that Chris Jones hustle to the football. Whitaker back in. London was a target in the first half. Wah, along with Richardson and S.J. Green. Calvillo with time. Steps up. Calvillo with Lock. Target that time. Chris Big. Jones, sorry, Matt. Chris Jones defense for the Lock. That, that's where Calvillo takes advantage of it because he's a veteran of 19 years. But you're going to see all kinds of defenders up here in the line of scrimmage. Seven in total. But the problem for most quarterbacks is they don't know which one's coming and which ones aren't. And that's what Chris Jones does. But the great protection up front allows the veteran to find an open man and move the chain. 20-yard reception, the longest of the season for Patrick Lavoie. And first and 10. Timeout, Montreal. And a timeout taken by Montreal with 26 seconds remaining here in the third. Mark Tressman and... Marcus Brady there working together. Interesting, you'd burn a timeout there in the second half. Clearly, they didn't have the personnel package out there. Ryan Bombin came in late, extra offensive lineman. Didn't want to get a time count, put him in first and 15. First and 10. Calvillo keeps it. Calvillo now just fires it. And confusion all around. Chris Jones defense again. That time he put, again, the line of scrimmage was loaded up. The Montreal Alouettes brought in for more protection. Ryan Bombin, as I mentioned, there's Bombin there. But again, look at the defenders up here. You've got seven of them again. Which which one of the seven are coming? Just four, five, six up front. You got pressure off the edge from Ijiro Kowali. And that's a confusion that be, can be created. Six seconds left here in the third. Calvillo, Lefoy, and a big stick by Marcus Ball. And a pickup of four. And the third quarter is going to end. Toronto holding on to the lead here on Wendy's Friday Night Football. We go to the fourth. After three, Toronto with a four-point advantage. Net yards bang on when you look at the at the numbers, and you think about like what you mentioned, Matt. Different two halves that are going on right now. First half, the offense has exploded. A lot of deep balls. And we saw those uh, quarterbacks, marquee quarterbacks, putting it in the end zone. Second half, the defenses have now started to pick up their game. And you look at Montreal and a lot of confusion offensively. Absolutely. I mean, the two quarterbacks combined in the second half have combined for 64 yards total. Remember, they were well over 300 in the first half combined. So the defenses have made adjustments, yeah. and they've come out in the second half. And 
turned up their intensity. And remember, this is a Alouettes team that has owned this series here in Montreal. Chad Owens takes a knee. They have won. When you look at Ricky Ray coming out, 11 of the last 13 overall. Mm -hmm. And then they have swept Toronto in three of the last four years. But Ricky Ray, it's different, and you see him now trying to get things going here to start the fourth, because that was a sluggish third quarter for both offenses. Yeah, the defense has picked it up, but very different looking team with Ricky Ray in charge in the last few years in this matchup. Three point game. Boy, straight ahead. It's a guy that we haven't talked a lot about. And, you know, when Corey Boyd gets 100 yards rushing, this team usually wins 10 and 3. But because of the success Ray had in the first half throwing the football, he was on pace for well over 400 yards and was hitting that deep ball. They weren't looking to Corey Boyd. Leads the CFL in 10 plus yard runs. Hasn't had one here tonight. Boyd looking for that first down, spinning, and he'll run into that first down as Chip Cox comes up. And this is when you need the CFL rushing leader to come ready to play in this fourth quarter. There's the chart. Hugh Charles and Edmonton. And Corey Sheets, a newcomer in yeah. Saskatchewan, doing a real nice job there. They play the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Fantus back in Mosaic Stadium. But there's, there's the running backs. And it's the fourth quarter when Corey Boyd's going to be leaned on, especially when Toronto has a lead. Ray. Gives it to Boyd, stacked up by John Bowman again. Bowman, a fierce competitor on the inside, and Boyd. Yeah. Scored a TD in every game played this season. Absolutely, and, and able to close games out. Team is 10 and 3 when he gets 100 yards rushing. Yeah. Has great hands as well, and this is a guy that they can push deep too. Get the right matchup. They can send Corey. Boy, deep down the field on a deep pass route. It's going to bring up now second and nine for Ray. Can they keep the drive alive? Ray finds Inman. Inman with a first down and more and into Montreal territory. And a big key strike there. Seth Williams going in his direction once again. And the guy who's going to influence the defense is this guy right here, Chad Owens. He's going to take off down the field, and when he does, that leaves Inman open on the sideline because he draws all the coverage. When Chad Owens takes off, he's going to pull everybody with him, and that leaves Dontrell Inman open on the sideline. Ray quickly to the outside. Dury sprints ahead. Rod Davis, Matt cannot believe he did not have an interception and take it to the house. But Ricky Ray saw him in time. And, and when it's a normal swing pass like this, he's going to float it out. But you're going to see pressure from Rod Davis coming up the field. And he cuts right through that passing lane. And Ray puts it up and over top.